Good morning, everybody. Let's uh, get this meeting started and have a call to order. I'll entertain a motion to start the meeting. So moved. Seconded. Any discussions? Vote? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, the roll call of voting mode. Voting members, I can't speak this morning, right? <laughs> I'm humbling myself. <laughs> Chris? Oh, God. Jeez. I forgot your name. Yeah, it's Chris. Chris, Chris is here. Damon? <laughs> yes. Joyce? Yes. Chuck? Yep. My name is Bill? Yes. And of course, Cindy, Cindy's here with us, the introduction of others. There's no one else here. There's no one here from the public, so I will not read that. Uh, those comments about public public comment. Um, the first item I think we need to do is review and approve the August 15th, 2022 meeting minutes. So I think I'll need a motion to do that. Motion to approve. Sorry. Any discussion about the minutes? I'm going to abstain because I was not here. Okay. I'm also eight. So if that's the case, we don't we don't have a quorum to, to uh, approve it. So what we'll do is um, I'll, I guess um, table to the next meeting. Table it to the next meeting. Do I need to have a motion to do that? Can't. I Can motion to table the approval of the minutes until the next meeting. Sorry. Right. Any discussion? Vote. All right. All in Aye. favor? Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Damon. I'm not going to talk about a possible time change for this meeting. I'm not. I don't have enough data yet. Um, Chairperson's report. I know later on we're going to talk about um, the volunteer handbook and attachments after the director's report, and um, I think it's a, a really good opportunity for people to do some volunteer work for the council on aging. It'd be a, a, a very positive thing for people to do. I think that Cindy's got a, a, a great package here for the handbook. She can talk about the details, but she actually has pages, um, nine different roles uh, designated that could be filled by volunteers to help the Council on Aging. And yeah, I think it's a great package, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you for doing it, Cindy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome. Um, and I think I'll pass on now to the director's report. Okay, so first I just wanted to say the new space is working out great. We've got a lot of people stopping by um, that wasn't happening before. Now they're oh, stopping cool. to go into town hall and they'll peek in. Um, so that's great. We're getting a lot of foot traffic. Um, we do have our open house scheduled for Tuesday, October 18th from 2 to 6 p.m. Kind of a, you know, rolling, flowing thing. It's not like you come at 2 and you stay till 6. It's just come by, have some refreshments, we'll have some live music, take a look around, meet the staff. Um, so we're hoping that will grab a few more people to come in and see us. Um, we are still waiting on our tables to be delivered. I am going to follow up with the gentleman today. I was emailing with him last week. Tables were supposed to be delivered at some point last week. Um, now it is a um, warehouse issue, so we're just we were waiting for that, so I'll follow up on that, but hopefully that will be done. Our regular programs are ongoing. We do have Animal World Experience with Matt Gabriel tomorrow. He's going to bring in all kinds of different animals that he's rescued, explain them. People can touch them if they'd like. So that's, um, we're looking forward to that. We have, I want to say, 12 or 15 people signed up for that. Our newsletter, the next newsletter, the October-November newsletter, will be going to the printer this week. Just a reminder, people should give us a call to reserve their spot in any of the upcoming programs. Um, a lot of times we're ordering food for programs that we have, so it gives us a good idea of how much food to order. Um, so that's why we really like to have um, people call and let us know that they're coming. Uh, one program that we do has a, a capped limit of 10, and that's our watercolor class. So that's always a you know must do that people must call to register for their spot. I mean, we never turn anyone away from anything else, um, but it's just easier if we can know how many people to expect. Um, I think I mentioned last month the COA calendar is updated on our webpage. When I send, me or any of the other staff members send an email, there's a link to the calendar. 
Um, but it's on the web page too, so it's just another way for people to be able to see what we're doing. I update that as we do the newsletter. Um, hoping a new bulletin board is going to arrive today to be able to post updates to the public. Um, we do have a new whiteboard calendar. Kathy used to um, put all the programs month to month on a whiteboard at the school. Uh, so we ordered a whiteboard calendar, so she'll be updating that each month. So it's right there in the main room so folks can see what we have going on. Um, just a reminder that the Newburyport Chocolate Tour is on Saturday, October 1st. Um, tickets are on sale now. We're one of the many recipients. Proceeds benefit our transportation and prescription uh, assistance to folks. And the volunteer program we'll discuss. Great. Great. Okay. Volunteer program. Okay. So I have sent out handbook with all kinds of attachments. The reason we're doing this, <clears throat> Janet Delmari, our outreach coordinator, had come to me. They used to do a training with all volunteers. They would talk about everything from policies and procedures of the Council on Aging to um, boundaries, confidentiality, all those important things when you're volunteering for the Council on Aging. Even as something as simple as, I'm a newsletter volunteer, I'm going to come in and help fold newsletters. Um, and you see someone's address or someone's name, oh, she has cancer, I just saw it, you know, you can't do that. You know, it's not like, it's, it might seem simple, but it's just neighbors talking, but we want to remind everybody that there is confidentiality, you can't be discussing other people's um, issues out in a forum like that with everybody. So, um, it's just sort of policies and procedures, things that we want to make sure volunteers are following. We have a few volunteer roles where people are out in the community with the senior, mm -hmm. Um, we want to make sure that they are following, you know, we don't want them visiting with someone in the community when we are not in the office. Um, just in case something's happening, we want to make sure that they can call us and we are there as a resource to them to help if something's going on. Um, sort of running the gamut of everything from dress code to confidentiality and everything in between. So the handbook I did, um, I pulled a lot of these things from the previous handbook that the Council on Aging had. Mass Councils on Aging had a handbook, um, formerly Elder Services of the uh, Merrimack Valley had a handbook, so I was kind of looking at different things and pulling from different resources. And then I did send this to Town Council and Alex reviewed it, and um, so now I'm bringing it to you. So the other attachments that I have here is our vo um, volunteer application, it's a very simple application, the Massachusetts Cori form, we have everyone fill out a Cori the um, confidentiality and non-disclosure agreement, a waiver and release form. Both of those had already been approved by town council as well. We did a photo release form. Um, are you willing to be photographed so that we can put you on our newsletter or on our website, things like that. Our volunteer hours recording form. The agreement that says that you received the handbook and went through our training. Um, Janet has a volunteer client reporting form that she likes to receive monthly. So those are really for the people who are grocery shopping, doing a wellness call or a wellness visit in person with people. She just wants a little, you know, what did you do during your visit kind of a thing. She's also meeting with volunteers who do those particular roles in person on a monthly basis. So those are really the documents. Um, and then we do have Set, like Bill was saying, several different roles. So again, the grocery shopper, um, wellness caller, wellness visitor, newsletter volunteer. If we have a special event like a, a luncheon and someone wants to come help and serve food or help us set up or clean up, that kind of a thing. Um, we've had a couple of people come in and be a guest speaker or a guest instructor. They've shared some kind of a hobby. Um, so they've run a program. Um, newsletter, I said. Receptionist, we are trying to have um, someone sit at the front desk. They'll certainly help us answer phones, um, but it's really more or less to greet people. As you know, when you come in the front door and we're in our offices, we're not right there. I mean, we're always jumping up. I also did, um, I just ordered a little bell. So it's like this magnet thing. So when you open the door, it'll ding, like, like a business. Um, so that will help alert us too when we don't have someone available, but the receptionist position would be helpful to fill. I have someone who has, is interested in starting that this fall. Um, 
And that's a volunteer position? It is, yeah. We do have the woman who is um, sort of the Council on Aging Assistant, she is going to be working from 1 to 4 in the afternoons. Right now her schedule is a little bit scattered because Janet is on vacation, so we've asked her to come in earlier. Um, but regularly, going forward, she will be there um, from 1 to 4, and I will have her stationed at the front to be able to greet people. The other thing we're looking for is a van assistant, someone who is willing to go on the van when we go shopping or other programs. You can help people maybe fold up their walker, store the walker, grocery shopping. You can bring the groceries to the um, senior's door instead of the van driver having to get off of the van to do that. So that's a, a role that we're looking to fill too. So those are kind of all of the roles that we've got. Questions, concerns? It looks pretty good to me. I haven't read it in depth, but skimmed it, and I think it's you know, anytime you can codify things and set them down on paper, it makes it easier for people. So I think it's a good thing. What additional paperwork would we have to sign um, as the uh, being on the board of directors? So we would ask that you come to the one of the trainings, and then you would just sign the form that says, "Yes, I've received this." Okay. Uh, you know, if you'd sign the photo release form, anything that I've got in here. Okay. But other than that, you guys aren't really signing any. Kind of forms. And uh, one out of trainings. Uh, we'll Once Janet gets back from vacation, I told her oh, that I was going to bring yeah. this up to you guys, so I wanted yeah. to make sure that everything was a go before we okay. schedule any trainings. But we'll offer them. Um, you know, I'm not going to get everybody at one training, so we'll. Yeah, I, I think it's well. a great idea for people. Um, to know what's expected of them and what is not. Yes. So I think um, we're just trying to make it more of a, I guess, legitimate, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. so program. I have two. Um, not read it in detail, but I have skimmed it over. So and I haven't seen uh, everything that I saw. I, I was happy with. Okay. Talk to you. Yeah, I've read it. Um, my concern is the intensity of it. I've filled up job applications that are nowhere near as stringent as what you're asking for a volunteer. My fear is it will scare volunteers away. That's my only concern. Okay. We were looking for structure because this, this has been no structure for a long time and it has led to a couple of issues um, where we've had to reel the volunteer back in because they've gone. Mm -hmm over mm -hmm. what they should have been doing with the senior. And it can lead to a liability issue for the town. So that's why we're trying to be pretty stringent. Um, but the application itself is literally like one page. So we're not asking for right. you know your first form. But we just want to make sure people understand that there are well, You might get policies. more volunteers if, if you took the first forms. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> How many volunteers are you usually working with at any one time? Ooh. I'll say 20 at this point, but it varies because, I mean, we have mm -hmm. newsletter days. It's hard for me to, like, I, I don't always count those people, you know, and then the people that come and help us with, um, with different programs, it's kind of like a one-off, you know, mm -hmm. but Janet has a core set of those grocery shoppers, wellness visitors, and wellness callers. Those are the ones that are really the most, yep. um, that really need to have this program. The mo the, someone who's coming to fold newsletters, it's just yeah, more or less to be... Is there a difference? You know, I didn't uh, fill out a volunteer form when I came and picked up the cardboard, but technically that was volunteering. Right. Do you, are you making that distinction for like a one-off event versus a regular... Like an ongoing, regular... Ongoing. Yeah. yeah, we will make that. And the training, she's going to try and get those people who are the wellness callers, visitors, and grocery shoppers at one training and mm -hmm. be a bit more intensive with them. And then it's going to be a little bit more lax for pretty much everybody else. Yeah. You know, I like the formality. And, and again, just something I'd recommend is looking, depending on how many you have to manage, having a volunteer management software application. There's a lot of nonprofit things that out there, particularly if you need to have them track you know, the time that they're uh, working and stuff like that. Also have a little database so that if you need volunteers you can go into the database and see what 
somebody's done, oh, I you know, need van drivers or I need this, I need that. Um, so I can make a couple of recommendations there. But I'd also recommend just if you have particular functions, just a little job description. I, that way, I don't think I actually passed those out to you. Because that way, like, exactly. There is so back to your comment yes. about the uh, person who kind of went off the rails. Yes. <laughs> if you're able to give them, like, this is what's expected of that role, and there you go. Right. Because you can terminate volunteers, or they are. We, that's it actually, is like a yeah. paid job, but it's not paid right. job. But That's listed in the handbook, too. Yeah. Is, you know, either the volunteer can terminate, or if it's not working out on our end. As well, but I did do little job descriptions. They, they are generally like two and three sentences. Yep. Um, but just a sort of brief overview of what the role entails. So I think we should entertain a motion to accept this volunteer handbook and process and include it into the way we do our business in the Council on Aging. So if I can have a motion to do that. So moved. Seconded. Any discussion? We've had some good discussion. Any more discussion? I think, you know, we may want to review it in a little while once everyone's had more of a chance to read it. And, uh, and if we have any additions or further questions about, you know, the job descriptions or things like that, we can always update so it. I will email them. those because I don't believe I included that. So I'll do that as a separate email. I'll send you all the job descriptions yeah, so you can the role good. descriptions is what we. That's a great comment. That's a great comment. I mean, I, I read this on the flight over to Italy. I went through it. I was awake that long, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's. I think you did a great job to put this together and to pass it through. through uh, the legal. Should we wait for council's approval also before we roll on? Um, I think it's already been approved. It has by town council. Yeah. 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 Yes. yes. They've reviewed it and okay. approved everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's let's amend. Can we amend the motion to say we'll accept this process, but we still want to review it as we dig into it deeper, so to speak? I mean, I don't, I don't feel like we need to amend the process. I think we can just set it on the agenda to look at it, look at it again, again okay. in a couple of months. Okay, then we'll stick with the original motion. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Thanks, Cindy. I would say it's a great job, Cindy. Yeah. Living document too. There's yeah. need to make changes. We'll do that. Yeah. 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 So, my my speech again is that this is a great opportunity for. There's no public here, but anyone who's watching this this video, um, it's a great opportunity to do something positive for the for the, the aging population in the town of Newbury. And again, I'll say that this board that we sit on um, was approved to have nine contributing members, and we have six. So if anyone has any desire to um, do something positive at the level that we're at, please feel free to submit a request to the select board. And the same applies to the Friends of the Newbury Council on Aging. There are three people on that team, and they're looking for, for volunteers to join them. and. Um, it's a very positive thing to do, and, and uh, anything that, anything positive like that that helps the town, and especially our aging population, it's, it's, it's a worthwhile thing to do. So, I believe their next meeting is next Tuesday evening. Okay. Uh, at the Friends is what I'm speaking of. Um, I believe at 6 p.m. But if people have questions, they can certainly give me a call and let me know, and I can d confirm that. But. That will be held at the Council on Aging in person. So if anyone is interested in joining the Friends, they could we can have come to me. Invite them to it. Yeah. Great. And the last thing I'll say is um, if you look at the videos of these meetings, recordings of these meetings, they were always sequenced oldest to newest. They've been resequenced like the select board. So they're all in newest to oldest sequence. So you don't have to tap down to the bottom of the page to, to find out uh, what you want to look at. Uh, Cindy, I have a question about the friends' meetings. Like you are now meeting in person. Uh, this one we are. This one you are. Do you have to be invited? Are there meetings open to the public 
that people can stop in? So I believe if you go to their website, they will say if you would like to join the meeting before it was contact um, one of the members who would give you the Zoom, app, um, Zoom invitation. Mm -hmm. But seeing as it's at the Council on Aging, I would say if someone's interested, they should feel free to drop by. I, I would think so. Yeah. yeah. And if, if four of us drop by, that becomes a quorum. That's, that's like a quorum. We have to post that. We would have to post yeah, if, that. Yeah. If, if you, if four, you, four yeah. of us. Yes. Yeah, okay. Isn't it actually three? It's four. 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 Because yeah. there's six. Four of you. for six. Oh, okay. One more than half. Okay. Yeah. So let me know if you're going to do that because I would need to post that soon. <laughs> Great. Is there any more new business? No. No need for executive session. Um, I will entertain a motion to establish October 17th, 2022 as the next meeting day. So moved. Second. Any discussion about that date? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Myself, right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. <laughs>